Hello, did you miss me? Um, I just wanted to go over uh, some of the things that you're learning in gray market income and uh, just say congratulations that, um, you know, a lot of you took this class and you had no idea what you were in for. Um, and sometimes that first night of introductions can feel um, like, whoo, there's a lot going on here. And uh, it's fun to have a review of what are you learning, what are you here to do, and um, what should you be doing on your own. So um, let's go over the first big items, the three types of income needed to create wealth. Um, we looked at what is steady income, we looked at what is uh, passive income, and then the item that's kind of smashed in between is gray market income. And gray market income is really um, all of the relationships, all the exchanges, all the bartering that you may be doing um, that also decides, um, it really decides the relationships that you will pull from. Gray market, it's natural, um, its natural position is just to increase the quality of your life, but many people use gray market relationships as a, as a, as a jumping pad to use things full time, as to take some skills that they have and use them in a full time manner. The other thing that we went over was, you know, kind of what is an asset? What is the definition of an asset? And right now, you should be almost jumping out at the screen to go, an asset is something that pays you money. If it doesn't pay you money, it's not an asset. And, and that, I think, is a key item. We talked about how people do not uh, spend a lot of time collecting assets. And we use the board to explain um, the concept of monopoly and how Monopoly teaches people how to participate fully in capitalism. And, you know, we, this is, we teach this class in the United States, so we really look at a capitalistic market, um, and, and that's a lot of what those skill pieces will be using, is how do you participate in capitalism. Um, but again, an asset is something that pays you money. And, uh, and focusing that concept on how do you start collecting assets and stop collecting junk? Uh, the other thing that we talked about is that money only has one purpose. One, 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 one purpose. That's all money's good for and that it buys you some choices. So uh, again, w there are a lot of technical jangle, jangle stuff that we go over in class, but the other thing that I want you to remember about that is you had six weeks to work through this. So there's a lot of different things that will absolutely lightning for you. For those of you who are taking the class for the second or third time because you've reached another window or you're, lo you're longing to now take the skills that you learned and apply them to another model, um, you probably are thinking did I take this class? Is this the same? Like, I don't remember this. It's totally natural. We expect you, and everyone expects you, I mean, the rules of education are, we expect you to forget about 50 to 70% of what you learned. Um, so again, if you're heading through that first night and you're like, wow, we went through a lot of stuff, don't worry. That's why we give you these uh, videos, so that you can go back and just review all the stuff that we talked about. Um, the other thing we went over is the 10 types of capital. Um, I think that the 10 types of capital are almost worth doing their own whole video on. Um, I could do a whole class just on the 10 types of capital. But the point that I want you to get out of the 10 types of capital is, A, I'd really like you to review that paper um, and just look at it more carefully. Many people get stuck on that money is the only answer or that that money is the only resource that they need and that's not true. 
that there are many types of resources that will make you successful. And that when you see something, an asset, that has multiple resources applied to it, it has a much higher chance of being successful. So when you see an idea, when you see the asset being your intellectual property, and you're just putting time on it, that's not enough to get it to go to the moon. The more assets that, the more, I'm sorry, the more pieces of capital, the more resources that you can apply to the asset, the larger and faster that asset will grow. So let's give an example. Let's give the example of the writer. So the writer needs some of the time of, they need uh, time. They need physical capital of time. Uh, but they also need the, a lot of other types of capital, right? They need emotional capital. Sometimes it takes guts to take on a project like that. Um, sometimes you need the emotional capital of your friends. Sometimes you need the emotional buy-in of someone else. Um, sometimes you need worker bees. You need human capital. Um, there are many types of capital that you will have to draw upon. Sometimes that's knowledge. Um, that sometimes that is other people's knowledge. Some people, sometimes it's technical stuff. A lot of times I see uh, many small business owners, many ideas get totally jammed up because someone is afraid to interface with technology or new technology. So again, I want to just go back to what is the purpose of learning the 10 types of capital is money is not the only form of capital that you're going to need in your life. So start identifying capital as something that you already have. Sometimes you're putting um, time into things that aren't ever going to pay you. And that the time that you're using, if, if you want to create wealth, time is one of the pieces of capital that cannot be squandered. Um, same with relationships, things like that. So the 10 times of capital, again, take some time, review it, and just open up to how that would apply to the types of things that you want to do. The other thing that we did in class was, you know, have you start writing down what you're good at and what you like to do and what are the skills that you could, by just adding some other resources to them, perhaps turn into um, a, a form of reward that's money. So um, a lot of us have skills that we give to away. A lot of times that we give them to our employers, uh, that we use them in our everyday business, but they can be utilized in a different way. So again, look at that top five. We only give you five because a lot of times that stumps people. If you are that overachiever who's like, man, I got like 20. Use your homework time and write them all out because sometimes you might have two items that aren't able to fit together in the way that you can perceive them right now, but sometimes they don't need to fit together. Sometimes they need to stack on top of each other or they need to be assembled in a whole different way. So again, everything on the table. When I look at the people who are the most successful in this class series, they are the people who have opened up and just thought about what are they willing to put on the table. The, this class goes by super duper 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 fast. And if you're spending the first three weeks of your session in resistance, to, well, I couldn't do that, or I don't know how that works, or whatever, you will not get as much out of this session. You need to really consider just letting everything be on the table, and that this is very difficult work to do alone. Um, if it weren't difficult, everybody would totally have this answer done. So um, if you want to, to power boost your chances of success, let everything come on the, to the table. Um, the, the, the example I give is a friend of mine who took this class and he was a painter. And as a painter, 
he specifically worked in um, an all new construction. And then the new construction area just, I mean, it just dried up to nothing. But he had used his gray market time to develop what he really enjoyed. And what he really enjoyed was coin collecting. He loved coin collecting. He loved trading, he loved buying, he loved the history of it. He loved history, he loved history of different nations, he, he, he loved kind of weird, intricate pieces, and that he truly had a love of that industry. Now, coin collecting had nothing to do with painting. He wasn't going to give up painting as a living because it, it wasn't lucrative. That, you know, he, makes a t he made a ton of money being a painter and running a paint crew. But he had this extra money, and he at first kind of chose, I think I'm going to use that extra money, try to make a couple of trades um, to go on vacation. Um, and then it came a new car. And then, it, and then his entire rest of his business fell apart. And he had to come back and really look at, can I do this for a living until what I normally do recovers? That right there is the definite benefit of another concept called multiple streams of income. That having more than one completely and uniquely different area that can stream income into your life, oh, so helpful. So, so very helpful. So um, don't get confused when we talk about multiple streams of income and gray market. Yes, he took his concept, which was a gray market idea. It's something he loved to do. It increased the quality of his life. It was skills he already had. It was how he used his free time. This was not going to make him wealthy. But it absolutely was going to buy a vacation. It was going to buy a car. And because it was a unique stream of income that was not related to his day job, when his day job dried up, he had another opportunity. And that I think is one of the underlying causes, one of the under, not the underlying causes, one of the underlying great little gems of you coming through this class. And that is that you're building uh, some padding around how many ways can you make money. And, and in this world, one stream of income, not going to cut it. That uh, we talked about this um, in in just the concept of what is monopoly. Does the $200 that you get when you go around go, is that the strategy? No way. Um, just a paycheck isn't going to make anyone wealthy, even if it's a great paycheck, even if you're great at saving. You've got to look at some of these other ways of having multiple streams of income, multiple relationships, multiple skills. So. Again, I'm just going to do a quick review. Three types of income needed to create wealth is what we talked about. We talked about uh, money is only good for one thing. It only buys one thing. What is an asset? Uh, what are the 10 types of, uh, I should do this, 10. Uh, what are the 10 types of um, capital that you have to invest in your ideas? And then we gave you some homework, and the homework really was, you know, what are the resources that you can add to the assets that you already have to make more? And then the other one we gave you, which I've already seen some of you start to key in on, are start looking at your network. What's missing? Um, your network is your platform for everything. Who you hang in with, who you missing? Um, when I did this class myself the first time, um, I found that the key item I was missing was specific people in specific genres. That I needed these people, these relationships, to be the tools in my tool bag. So I needed someone who was a great accountant. I needed somebody who knew how to do um, certain kinds of writing. I needed somebody who knew how to do social media. So again, start looking at who is absent in the list that you've already created. And um, 
then in my final parting words, I'll say, I'm proud of you. I'm so glad, um, I'm so glad that you took the six weeks out to, to look at this, to, to look at the ways that you can um, create a better life for yourself. And, and you should just give yourself a little group clap for that because, you know, not everybody's willing to do it. And um, my personal advice to you in this session is exhale. Exhale, totally enjoy the ride, let it, feel it out, get as many different perspectives as you can from that room. This class is never not packed. It's never not packed with awesome people. Um, you should look at yourself in the mirror. I mean, come on. Um, the, these are people who have skills. They have education. They have contacts. Um, there will be a lot of buddy work that you'll be doing in there. And the faster that you can just be calm and work in the space and let these ideas start pulling together without, um, without resistance, um, that you can drop the resistance. Just let the ideas come. If they're right for you, you'll know. If they're not, let them drop away. Let some more new ones come in. But again, be relaxed. Be in love with the fact that anything could happen and you get a room full of people surrounding you who are dying to be part of a great idea. So again, I thank you. Um, I'll see you next time and um, that's it. Bye.